Welcome again. This is Dr. Mugabel, and we are visiting double side ban with carrier. We have covered double side ban without carrier, and it's time now to look at double side ban with carrier DSB WC, or in short, AM. When we say AM in general, we mean double side ban with carrier. In this lecture, we'd like to go over the introduction quickly. Why do we go from double side band without carrier to double side band with carrier? We'll go into the basic definition of AM, and we'll look at the modulation index power efficiency. Then we'll look at the AM signal both in time and in frequency domain. Later on in coming videos, we'll see how to generate and demodulate AM signals. So, from double sideband suppress carrier to double sideband with carrier, what is the motive? Why do we add the carrier? Carrier recovery, we have seen that uh, receiving double sideband suppress carrier signal requires a coherent detector, requires multiplication by cosine with the same phase. Remember the receiver circuit? We had to multiply by cosine omega ct and this should have the same frequency as the incoming carrier carrier recovery circuits which are required for this operation which we call the coherent demodulation coherent demodulation means requires a coherent detector is required a cosine a carrier with exactly the same phase those circuits are relatively sophisticated and of course they are costly Remember that we usually do the reception at thousands of miles or at, at long distance usually, which means the signal will be noisy and getting the carrier from it is not uh, an easy job. So this is why we want to find a solution that does not require demodulation with uh, coherent detection. Double, band, double side band suppress carrier, the one that we have seen before without carrier, can be good for point to point applications because we have a complicated receiver, but we only have one of the receivers, or we're receiving at one side. However, if you are transmitting at one point, and then we are at lots of receivers, RX1, RX2, and so on, you have lots of receivers, this is called broadcasting. So we have point to point, and we have broadcasting. If you are doing broadcasting, then you can take more complexity at the, receiver, at the transmitter side, but you want your receiver to be simple. Why? Because you have lots of them. It's going to be very expensive to have a complicated receiver. So we can summarize here that uh, double sideband suppress carrier, which requires coherent detection, is not good for broadcasting because the receiver is complicated. Now, let me show you why we require a, a coherent detector. This illustration will show us the basic concept. What you see down here is an example of amplitude modulated signal. So you can see the red envelope and the green envelope. These are just uh, there to show you, um, to make things simple. Otherwise, what we get is just the, the carrier inside. And the amplitude is varying according to the message. And if somebody asks you now, if we are doing amplitude modulation, where is the message? You would say the message is in the amplitude. But it could be this signal, or it could be this signal, or it could be a mix between the two. So we could have this as a message. We could have this. We could have also this. There are lots. Maybe you can think of other options. Why? Because they are all messages. If you flip them, if you get their inversion and fill with the carrier, you get exactly the same shape. Except the only way to know is to zoom in and make sure you have your own carrier. Okay. Then we look at the phase. Did the signal flip the phase or not? So we have to go inside and see. We are following the carrier phase. Okay. If the carrier continue in the same sign, then we'd say that, okay, this, the signal, the message did not change its sign. If it was positive, it will continue to be positive. But if we find that all of a sudden, the phase has been inverted, or we have 180 degree, then we say that the message is uh, the negative of, of the original signal or the previous signal. Doing this is requires coherent detection, knowing what the original phase was and comparing with it. So we want to avoid this. We want just to have the message in the amplitude. So if we can let the message be the envelope of the signal, we can just use an envelope detector. We can just need, we just need to detect the envelope and we have a non-coherent demodulation. A modulation, demodulation that does not require knowing what the phase is. Now, 
how can we make the message be the envelope or the modulated uh, of the modulated signal how can we make sure that there is no negative positive issue the answer as you might guess we need to make sure that the message is always positive how do we do this because for voice application we have positive and negative now let's see now let's see how to make the message always positive and this is the definition of am we can see here in the diagram on the side that we have a message and this message is going to have a peak so this peak let's call it np let's say that the message has the same value in the negative and the positive np in that case if you want to raise your signal to an amount that makes it all positive remember that we have the average zero is here this is the reference value okay if we add a which is greater than nb we will make sure that a plus m of t will always be positive this is our reference zero and now everything is shifted to a now you can see here that shifting the message m of t by an amount by a dc value which is a shown in red such that the a plus the message is always positive will guarantee that we have the message in the envelope and of course a must be much great, uh, greater than or equal to np which is np is the peak value of the message now to continue with the diagram here you can see that we have the carrier here and if you multiply the original message m by cosine you get double sub band suppressed carrier if you multiply this what are we going to get we'll get the message always in the positive side we have the mirror image in the negative side there is no crossing with the zero for the message so we define the am signal in short we say am otherwise we can also call it double sideband plus carrier so we can write double sideband with carrier or double sideband plus carrier or in short we can say just am if you say am without definition without details we know that it is plus carrier now this is how the am looks like and if you open the bracket now you'll find that there is a cosine omega ct plus the message what is this the second term is a double side and plus carrier uh, without carrier now if you open the bracket you will find that adding dc is equivalent to adding a carrier and this is after the multiplication and this is why we call it double side band plus carrier the second term is the double side band without carrier and we have added a carrier term to it of course this addition will have a big advantage because it makes the detection non-coherent I don't need to know the phase of the receiver so this is called double side band with carrier and we also call it am or full am okay so we are going to define the modulation index to be the ratio between mp over a how much we added compared with a what's a is the amount of dc that we have added np is the peak of the message we call this ratio the modulation index remember we said that a must, must be greater than mb or equal so the maximum value for for mu is supposed to be one and the minimum value is supposed to be zero this is important so far we have defined am we have defined the modulation index and we gave the ratio for the modulation index now what happens if you make mu greater than one if you make mu greater than one it means mb is greater than a it means you have added a dc but this dc is not good enough the signal still could have negative and positive side and this is called over modulation okay, and this requires coherent or synchronous demodulation in the next slide i will show you more about over modulation in the following slide i would like to generalize the definition of um, modulation index so our focus is on the modulation index but in the previous slide we have defined the case where mp where the message has positive and negative amplitude which are the same or having the same magnitude but now in general let's call this m max the maximum possible positive value for the signal and m min to be the peak and the negative side so this is a positive quantity and this is a negative quantity so even if m max does not equal to the negative of m minus so they don't have the same magnitude we can still define the modulation index to be the difference divided by 2a plus m max plus m min the difference divided divide by 2a plus the sum so this is a more general definition of modulation index you might need this so we just uh, list it here otherwise we can use a simple definition for the modulation index we can see that this is more general because what if they are equal 
if they are equal we can substitute so we can get if they, have, if they are equal we can call them we can call this MP okay let me just change the color we can call this MP right so if they are equal this is going to be equal to 2 MP divide by 2A and then if they are equal they're going to cancel out here because of the minus sign and what we get is MP over A and this is basically the definition we had before for the case of that M, M max equal to the negative of the minimum let's call it MP and then the modulation index boils down to the same value we had before now let's see the spectrum of the AM signal we have seen the spectrum of double sideband subrisk carrier and it's time to see the spectrum of AM signals or full AM signals we start with the expression for the AM signal now uh, this is the expression if we open the bracket if we open the bracket and find the Fourier transform you'll find that this term is just a cosine cosine is two deltas we have a scale of half and M times cosine will be the same spectrum of, as M shifted to the right and to the left and we have a scale of half we have a similar thing in, in the frequency domain in the omega domain multiplying by cosine is always scale of half but for the deltas only for the deltas we scale things by 2 by so let's focus on the frequency domain here with f um, as our, our main reference so if you want to sketch the spectrum you'll find that assuming that your original signal has a spectrum of triangle okay this is our assumption then shifting this term would be the two triangles and the two deltas here the two deltas shown will map to the red term so this two deltas those two deltas were missing in the double sideband so the only thing that shows in the spectrum uh, as a difference compared with double sideband separate carrier is to have these deltas representing the carrier term or no so in engineering as usual we have a buy and a price we have pros and cons so we have seen the advantage of simple receiver um, we have seen the advantage of envelope detection what's the price what's the price paid what we got is simplicity in the demodulation and the price is waste and power how come remember that the added term carrier term is a cosine omega ct plus the message m of t times cosine omega ct the red term is the waste term and the green term is the one that's going to be modulated and sent so the carrier term remember the power of amplitude of a cosine signal is amplitude square of 2 this is the amount of power that does not carry uh, uh, this is the amount of power that does not carry any information so it's just an added for simplicity now the power of the message will refer it, uh, to it as pm the moment we are not sending the message by the way what we are sending is the message multiplied by cosine and we call this the sideband power so what's pm is the power of the message what's sideband power what's ps it's the power after multiplying by cosine and we can say that the power after multiplying by cosine with simple assumptions that it's going to be half the power of the message this is always mistaken please remember we are not sending the message so the useful power is not pm the useful power is pm over 2 why because scaling it by cosine multiplying it by cosine will result in half the power this is called the sideband power after multiplying by cosine so we're going to define the power efficiency it's usually how much useful power compared to the total power so it's how much power in the sideband compared with the power on the carrier and the power on the sideband if you substitute you can simplify this because remember that we have the power in the sideband okay we can write this here is equal to uh, pm over 2 divide by the power in the carrier is amplitude squared over 2 plus the power in the sideband is pm over 2 so if you remove all these twos you get pm over a squared plus pm and usually this is represented in percent now remember that we cannot mix and match huh? this is a very common mistake you cannot have these equations are not correct and they are a result of mixing and matching between the two make sure that we have ps over pc plus ps this is just a result okay so I would, I would love always start with the sideband and know that the sideband power is half the power of the message okay let's take an example for finding the power a single tone modulation example 
the message is given to be B cosine omega, C, omega M. Omega M because this is the frequency of the message. Find the efficiency. As simple as that. So you can see the example shown here. Okay, and the, and the diagram shown on the side. The upper curve is when, um, since this is the signal, it just touched on the ground. So this is a case of MP equal to A or mu equal to 1. Okay, here mu is less than 1. And here you can see there is over modulation. And here is mu is greater than 1. So this is not usually uh, implemented. But now let's go back to the example. It says find the, the, find the efficiency. To find the efficiency, this is the general form for a double sideband plus carrier. A plus cosine, this is the message now, times cosine omega ct. Don't, don't mix omega m with omega c. Omega c is for the carrier, omega m for the message. Now we can take a as a common factor, and we have b over a cosine omega mt times cosine omega ct. And now we can define the modulation index to be np over a. But for this specific example, uh, b is equal to mp. Huh? So mu equal to b over a. We can write the, the signal in terms of mu to go from here to here. We have just changing the notation. We want things to be in terms of mu. Now, if you want to find the efficiency, it's the power in the message over a squared plus the power in the message. The power of the message is b squared over 2 over a squared plus b squared over 2. And that's equal to if you like, if you take a as a common factor uh, up and down, then you'll find that this is nothing but uh, mu squared. If you divide here by a squared, you get mu squared. If you divide here by mu squared, a squared. If you divide by a squared, so basically multiply by two, you got this expression. So the efficiency is uh, we have written the efficiency in terms of mu for an objective, because we know that mu is between zero and one. What will be the maximum power efficiency? And what's the minimum? The minimum, of course, is zero. And the maximum, if mu equal to one, of course, maximum without overmodulation, then you get one third, which is 33%. So the best, the best performance for this example, I have to repeat that what we have done, this equation and this number is just for the single tone. But it's a good example to show. So don't expect the efficiency in AM to be very high. In fact, if you use the same example and substitute mu 0.5 this is going to drop to 11.11 percent .11%, and if you make it 0.3 it's going to be only 4.3 percent and of course this is these are very small numbers in fact in practical radio systems the efficiency is less than 25 percent so if you get large numbers you have to question but this is still okay because we are we have hundreds and thousands and millions of receivers and that will simplify them I would like you to, this is the example of single tone. Maybe you would love to practice with an example of dual tone. We have two cosines. Things will become a little bit more difficult. So now the question of why would somebody use AM or double sideband surplus carrier with, a, with all this small efficiency? As we mentioned, usually we have millions of receivers. So it's worth simplifying the receiver, even if we pay the price in terms of power because we have only one transmitter in broadcasting. Okay, uh, once more, this warning is uh, because of this common mistake. The efficiency driven here, or we got here, is only for the case of single tone. Do not use this for other examples until you have a single, or unless you have a single tone. Now let's conclude with this practice. I leave you with this practice. It says the message, we can see the square message here. M of T is periodic pulse train as shown in the figure. The signal is modulated, modulated using AM. Sketch the AM signal. A, of course, this is just a repetition. AM signal means A plus M of T cosine omega CT. You should remember this expression. Corresponding to a modulation index of 0.6666667. So uh, how do we, what should we do? And how do we do, how do we deal with this problem? First, you need to use mu to find the modulation index. So mu equal to mp over a, right? So uh, we, we are given mu this time. You need to find a. Once you find a, you know how much to shift the signal. You should shift the signal up. Of course, we expect no overlap because mu is less than 1. The question will be more difficult, and you can try it if, if this was 1.5, for example. You shift everything up. You, you do the, the mirror image, and then you fill with the carrier. So 
just to help you out, I will share the answer here. So it's, uh, you get something like this. But now I leave it for you to find how much is the power efficiency in, the, in this case. Okay, so please share your answer in the comments. And by reading lots of comments, we'll see uh, whether we have the same answer or not. So I leave it to, for you to prove your answer. Thank you very much. And please, if you want to see how we generate and demodulate AM signals, you can keep with us on the coming videos. Thank you.